Hi my dear friends, today we will discuss an important topic which is ocular tumor. I hope you will enjoy my presentation. Ocular tumors can appear on the eyelid, in the eye itself, in conjunctiva, choroid or retina, and in the orbit which is the cavity that houses the eye pore. Early diagnosis of ocular tumor and treatment is necessary. Time is vital to save the vision of the patient. Also, the eye and even the life of the patient can be lost in most serious cases. There are several types of benign and malignant tumors that affect the eye and its different structures. They include Tumors of the orbit, tumors of the eyelid, tumors of the conjunctiva, tumors of the uveal tract, and tumors of the retina. Orbital tumors. We should ask ourselves a group of questions. Is the lesion inside the orbit? Also, whether it is an ocular lesion or a non-ocular lesion. Ocular lesion means that the lesion starts in the globe and spread to outside, while non-ocular lesion it, it is outside the globe and then spread to the globe. Very important, in case of non-ocular lesion, we should decide whether the lesion inside the cone or outside the cone. What is the cone? The cone is the space surrounded by the extraocular muscles and the back of the globe, like here like here, the, which is called intraconal, while the extracone is the space outside the extraocular muscles and surrounded by the pony orbit and called extraconal space, like here and like here, here the intraconal space, while here the extraconal space. And very important to decide whether the lesion intraconal or extraconal, like here also in this uh, photo we can notice that the yellowish here is the extraconal space which uh, is limited by the air uh, the extraocular muscles and the pony orbit while here we can notice that the intraconal space limited by the intraocular muscles and uh, the back of the globe like this data intraconal space tumor they include venous vascular malformations demoid cyst metastasis from different parts of the body or from the globe itself, capillary and cavernous hemangioma, lymphoma, rhabdomyosarcoma, sarcoma, optic nerve lesions like optic neurites, optic nerve glioma, and optic nerve meningioma, and schwannoma of the third, fourth, and sixth cranial nerve. Extraconal space. The tumor of the extraconal space can include the cyst, lacrimal gland tumor, which is located outside the cone, and metastasis from different part of the body, and lastly, schwannoma of the trigeminal nerve. The first tumor we will discuss is the demoid cyst. It is a common tumor, usually occur in children, and make up about 4% to 6% of the orbital tumor, which is a benign tumor. It is a painless mass, free from skin with a variable ocular displacement, like in this photo. Mostly located near the lacrimal fossa or nasal bone, and grow slowly remodeling the adjacent bone or sutures. In this photo, we can notice that there is a mass in the outer part of the orbit near the place of the lacrimal gland. This mass usually well defined mass and cause compressing on the adjacent bone causes uh, reshaping or remodeling uh, it. Radiological features, the intensity of the moisture is similar to that of fat on MRI. And CT, making the diagnosis easy. It can be diagnosed easily on uh, CT and MRI. In on CT, it a be well defined, low attenuating mass. Calcification can be seen, and the central cavity is heterogeneous as a result of creatine and other cystic debris which located inside the dermoid cyst. In this photo, 
B of CT, we can notice that there is a mass in the upper outer part of the uh, orbit will uh, divide in the lateral superior orbital wall. We can notice that it, it causes pony displacement of the lateral orbital structures. Also, this photo uh, show a CT of the patient with a demoid cyst and show a demoid cyst in the lateral aspect of the orbit causing compressing of bone. The second important tumor is rhabdomyosarcoma. It is the most common primary malignant tumor of the orbit in children. It is highly malignant tumor. Average age of presentation of is of 7 years old. It is more common in males than females. It is presenting with rapidly progressive exosalmus like in this photo. It mainly originates from uh, extraocular muscles, nasopharynx, or nasal sinuses. Uh, usually uh, present in the superior medial orbit and um, causes bony destruction. On CT, a bulky, aggressive looking mass, like here, with no dividing edge, and it is isolated or slightly hyperdense and shows uniform enhancement. Uh, here in this CT, we can uh, differentiate between benign and malignant tumor that the malignant tumor it doesn't respect the anatomy and the causes destruction of all the surrounding structures to the tumors and no defining edge while in benign tumor there is well defined edge and some sort of inspection of the anatomy in this photo we can notice that there is a malignant mass causes proptosis and demonstrate invasion of the right maxillary sinus also with extension to the lateral orbital wall due to the aggressive nature of the tumor. Here we can notice that there is extension to the maxillary sinus and here there is a destruction of the lateral orbital wall. Also here there is uh, this photo of a CT we would show the to uh, the tumor which causes destruction of the nipi structures the lateral wall of the orbit orbital metastasis it represents about six percent of orbital tumors most retrobulbar metastases are extraconal in location it subsequently encroach on the intra coronal compartment as they increase in size. When large, they cause uh, infiltration of the surrounding structures with poorly marginated masses, usually originating mostly from the greater wing of sphenoid resulting in uh, bony destruction, like this photo. We can notice that there is different uh, tumor uh, masses here and here, which was poorly defined edge and mostly uh, they are extra coronal in, in nature, but here it is inside the cone and outside the cone. In children, the metastasis, primary lesions, are most commonly in sarcoma and neoblastoma. In even sarcoma, proptosis is usually unilateral with sudden onset nature and a combining hemorrhage like this photo. The presentation in neoblastoma is similar, however, it is bilateral in 50% of cases and uh, with characteristic discoloration of the skin. Here, the abdominal ultrasonography is very essential to these children. Other pediatric malignancies that causes metastasis in the orbit uh, are testicular tumors and leukemias. In adult, the primary tumor of the metastasis is usually the breast or lung carcinoma. Tumor metastasizes more frequently to the eyes than the orbit, about 8 to 1. The orbital metastasis may be the initial manifestation of the lung, GIT, thyroid, or renal cancer. In adult, an infiltrative retrobalmal mass and inophthalmos is a characteristic feature of sclerous carcinoma of the breast. Like this photo, we can notice that there is a right inner 
salmos. It is uh, characteristic for uh, scarious carcinoma with uh, infiltrative uh, retrobulbar mass, causing uh, enough salmos or recession of the globe backwards. Hydrological finding the eye metastases uh, often are diffusely infiltrating and having ill defined margin. Unfrequent to be well defined, on CT the lesions are isodens or hyperdens and uh, enhancement may be needed, like here. This is T weighted fat saturated MRI showing metastasis in uh, the superior orbit, like here and like here. Lacrimal like gland tumors are very rare tumors. Histopathologically, they are classified into two types, epithelial and non-epithelial tumor. Most common benign type is mixed benign tumor, like in this photo. Most common malignant type is adenoid cystic adenocarcinoma, is in this photo. And we can notice that there is a tumor arising from the lacrimal gland and ill divine margin and causing infiltration of the surrounding structures. Tumors of the eyelid The tumors of the eyelid arising from the skin. All of us know that the layers of the skin, including epidermis and dermis. The skin also contain hair follicles, suspicious gland, and from these structures, uh, tumors of the eyelid arise. The nine tumors of the eyelids include epithelial tumors, melanocytic tumors, adenic cystic lesions, sweet gland origin, hair follicle origin, and miscellaneous lesions. Epithelial tumors, for example, it's squamous babyloma, which is a bit as a skin polyp or skin tag, like these photos. They can be a sessile or pedunculated lesion with a pedicle. Histopathologically, it, uh, it has a fibrovascular core and hyperkeratosis treated by simple excision. Keratoacansoma is a solitary, rapidly growing nodule in on sun exposed areas. This nodule has a center with, which is called uh, crater filled with creatine and rolled out margins, like this photo. They gradually resolve in their own with minimal scarring. Melanocytic tumors can be classified into benign and malignant. Benign uh, melanocytic tumors include congenital tumors, since pairs. They are derived from neurocytes or melanocytes. They presented at pairs and can be presented with hair. Uh, one example of them is called kissing nevus, which is nevat, uh, nevocytes migration before separation of the I let Zai like this photo. Only 5% of these congenital uh, melanocytic tumors change to malignant. Acquired uh, form of the benign melanocytic tumor include junctional nevus, which is the commonest form of the acquired melanocytic benign tumors. They arise in childhood and uh, typically begin as a lightly pigmented lesion. Histologically, the junctional nevus is uh, formed of melanocytes which present between the epidermis and dermis. When cell uh, is spread uh, to inside the dermis, it is called compound nevus, like this photo. In uh, melanocytic lesions in the epidermis include lentigo simplex, which is a small brown macule. They may be a solitary or multiple associated with peripheral lesions. Solar uh, lentigo which is a brownish uh, macule found over sun exposed area and slowly in increase in size. Freckles, it is a brown macule with increased melanin in the epidermal basal layer. Signs of malignant transformation include uh, slow pillars growing lesion if there is ulceration, bleeding, or crustacean of the melanocytic lesion. If there is pigmentary change or destruction of the eyelid margin, or if there is ulceration or loss of hair.
basal carcinoma it is a common eyelid tumor it is locally malignant uh, cutaneous tumor uh, locally malignant because it doesn't metastasize the common name of basal carcinoma is rodent ulcer as it invades tissue extensive risk factors for it ultraviolet radiation as in cases of exposure uh, in face skin personnel and in cases of exposure to arsenic compounds clinical picture usually average age of average age patients with basal cell carcinoma occur in 60 years old tumor often arises in the lower lid and median cancers morphologically they may be nodular in the form of nodule or nodulo ulcerative or sclerosing. In this photo, a very important sign in the basal cell carcinoma is that it has old edges. The old edges, due to the slow nature of the tumor, makes with an healing attempts in the tissue, leading to uh, the rolling uh, edges of the lesion or raised inverted edges. In histopathology of basal cell carcinoma, there is a characteristic feature which is called balisiding arrangement of the uh, basaloid cells in the periphery, which is the tumor's islands or nests of basaloid basal cells has a balisiding arrangement of cells in the periphery with haphazard arrangement of these cells in the centers of the island. In this photo, we can notice the balisiding arrangement of cells in the buffet. Here there is a nodule of the tumor, then ulceration, then rodent ulcer formation. This photo of extensive destruction of tissues in a rodent ulcer. Squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma arises in the brachial layer of the skin. It is the second most common eyelid tumors. Risk factors. Uh, ultraviolet exposure, exposure to sunlight, immune suppression, albinism, and chronic skin lesion. It appears as a nodule or plaque that then ulcerate with rolled out edges with greyish white keratinization. Order of uh, frequency medial cancers, upper lid, lateral cancers, then lower lid. Here we can notice the difference between the basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell lesion. Here is a nodule. While here it is uh, a malignant ulcer with rolled out edges. Histopathologically, the tumor arises from the epidermis with atypical epithelial cells with prominent nuclei. The well differentiated form of the tumor has the characteristic keratin bears, like this photo. We can notice that there is an ulceration with uh, an ulcer in cases of squamous cell carcinoma. Spicious gland carcinoma. It arises from the spicious gland and more common than basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. They appear as a nodule on the eyelid, uh, which is yellowish with lots of lashes with interabcedial spread, spread. Mimic uh, a lot like Clesia, so it should be differentiated from Clesion, especially in case of rapidly growing Clesion or recurrent Clesion after excision. It shows rapid lymphatic and hematogenous spread. Histologically, the tumors appear as pale, uh, foamy, vacuolated lipid containing cytoplasm with hyperchromatic nuclei, like this photo. While this photo showing the tumor which appear like calisium, and so it is a suspicious tumor and can be mistaken for calisium. Malignant melanoma. It is common in fair skin individuals. A clinical picture. It appears as uh, eyelid masses which show pigmentation, ulceration, and bleeding. It show also superficial spreading. It may be in the form of nodule. Histologically, it is a typical melanocyte within the dermis. We can see the characteristic feature of pigmentation of this type of the tumor. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy my presentation.